Yo, what is going on, guys? I hope you are all doing well. So on today's episode, we have here an absolutely disgusting article which goes over the five reasons why your wife is cheating on you. Now, guys, I'm going to extend this to five reasons why your wife or girlfriend is cheating on you because basically what this article does is it comes along and says, look, if you're being cheated on, if your wife or girlfriend or partner or whatever has been cheating on you, then somehow it is the man's fault. Somehow it is your fault. Somehow you need to apologize. You need to make things better, guys, because of course, when women cheat, it's entirely appropriate. So we're going to be jumping into this article here, uh, written in the year 2022 by a woman named Anna Davies. Okay. Now, oftentimes when I cover these articles, guys, they are terrible. Okay, I don't care how many sociologists come along and read them or write them. I don't care what kind of English degree these people have. To me, they are downright reprehensible. And unfortunately, a lot of men buy into this idea. Okay, the amount of dudes, before we jump into the article here, the amount of men that I've seen, whether it be on Reddit stories or just dudes sending me things where the guy gets cheated on, and he somehow thinks that it's his fault or he needs to, you know, just be more emotionally available or some crap like that. Guys, let me narrow this down for you, okay? A person cheats on another person because they're a piece of crap. It is what it is, okay? So let's jump into this article here. Again, written by, by a woman named Anna Davies. And let's see what she has to say. So, Susan Shapiro Barash knows affairs. For over 30 years, the reporter has been compiling research about what makes women cheat. The result is a revived, a revised edition of her book, A Passion for More Affairs That Make or Break Us. And she says, even 30 years ago, I'd found there was a striking absence of guilt and a sense of entitlement about affairs. Uh, but today it's even more pronounced. And with the interviewees in the past few years, what I'm really hearing is that while women might feel slightly upset for their husband, they feel very confident about their decision to start an affair. Barash interviewed women of all ages, races, and geographic locations within the United States, and she found that affairs didn't discriminate by age or life stage. I spoke with one 80-year-old who had two homes, one in Florida and one in Pennsylvania. Her husband was in Pennsylvania, and her lover was in Florida. To me, this speaks to the longing women experience at any phase of her life. So this is the first reason why women cheat and don't you don't you just love it guys I, I love when we're provided reasons for things as men you know and the five women who watch this channel and we're just given incredibly vague bullcrap that's the thing that i love about these articles guys is like not only are we blaming the men but we're just going to make it very vague while we do it so check this out this is reason number one as i hit the wrong damn screen here as to uh as to why women cheat so, number one, it's about emotional discovery. While a man might be pulled towards an affair sparking from physical attraction, Barash believes that the catalyst of a woman's fling begins when she's searching for something within herself that she can't find from her primary partner. Wow, what a way to dodge accountability, guys. You know, I didn't cheat with this guy because he was attractive. I didn't cheat with him because he has money or status. You know, the reason why I got with this guy is really just because something inside myself told me to do it. What kind of a lack of accountability taking maneuvered mental gymnastics bullcrap is that? Holy. Anyway, it's interior, it's visceral, and it's contempl uh, contemplative. Barash adds that women have the expectation that their husband will be everything. Across the board, the women I spoke to wanted their husbands to be their best friends, lover, confidant, and provider. Expecting all that from one man is pretty tricky. An affair, says Barash, allows for a man to realize all the roles of a woman might feel she needs in her life. Yeah, so basically, she wants a guy to provide for her, but at the same time, she wants a dude who's attractive. So what she's going to do is she's going to go out here. She's And by the way, not all women do this, by the way, guys. I'm just talking about specifically here, you know, the women who cheat. But actually, you know, women in general, I'm going to make my character a little bit bigger here. Women in general do categorize men into two categories, okay? Are you the dude who's going to provide, who's going to be the emotional support, who's going to be sitting there through thick and thin, doing, you know, going through all the hoops and the backflips and, you know, putting up shelves and mowing the lawn and all this crap? Or are you going to be the guy who she's attracted to, who she's going to visit on a 2 a.m. on a Wednesday? Like, guys, I think the video that you guys might be seeing before this, I think that was literally the case. We covered a woman on a TikTok 
who went to see a dude at two in the morning who didn't even know that she was coming because she wanted to get with him and then she complains that he's cheating it's absolutely astounding but anyway let's get going with the story here an affair says barash allows for a man to realize all the roles a woman might feel that she needs in her life wow a barash found that technology tools including social media as well as the privacy of a phone have made emotional affairs more common i would not just say that that's limited to emotional affairs by the way guys you know i copped some flack recently for saying that um you know instagram is a dating application right i, I love how people will agree with me up to the point right guys so i'll sit here and i'll say you know tinder's a dating application bumble's a dating application they're all you know you shouldn't be having these things in relationships and then i'll go on to say that instagram is technically a dating application and i don't think that social media is healthy for a relationship and then people will agree with me all the women will sit there and go you know that's so true social media is so bad but then you say to a girl delete your instagram when you're in a relationship or it's cheating and then everyone just loses their minds over it. They know that it's terrible for dating. They know that it's terrible for a relationship. But a lot of these girls, guys, they want to be able to keep their options while they're in a relationship. That's why a lot of them have Instagram in the first place. And they will defend it uh, till death do that part, ironically enough. So let's keep going here. An affair isn't necessarily a precursor to divorce. Well, I mean, if, you know, if you're a non-self-respecting man, it isn't. But let's continue. Barash's research found that 52% of women will stay in a marriage after an affair. And an affair is often used as a bargaining chip to demand change. They'll look at their husband and say, I've been having an affair because I'm unhappy. I love you and I want to stay with you. But you need to understand. Oh, don't worry. There's understanding here. If you cheat on your man, if you go out there and you get with a dude and say, oh, it's because I'm not happy, but I love you. Uh, that's cool. You can love me. Uh, but you can love me from the streets where you belong. You don't get to stay in the house. You don't get to stay continually supported. You don't get the emotional validation. You don't get the attention. You get to go out there and, hey, whoever you cheated on me with, fantastic. You can go hook up with that guy. And uh, don't worry, I'm sure that he'll take you in. And I'm sure that he will give you a relationship. So why don't you let us know how that goes? Barash says that a huge departure from her research in the 1990s is that more husbands are willing to go to therapy and work on mending the relationship after the affair. Yeah, wouldn't you know it? Men have been brainwashed into being acceptor, accepting, excuse me, and tolerant of bullcrap that goes on in their relationships. Guys, I find it incredibly sad that gone are the days where men would go through these things and say, I'm sick and tired of dealing with these things. Unfortunately, there are so many dudes out here who have been brainwashed into providing things and doing things that they have no responsibility doing. I'm sorry, guys, but if a girl cheats on you, that relationship is done. I don't care if you've been married 20 years. I don't care if you've known the girl and you've been dating for six months. It is over, guys. You know, if, if, if a girl wants to go out there and she wants to get with a whole bunch of dudes, she wants to have an affair, that's totally cool. You are free to make your own decisions. However, you do not get the benefits of a relationship. Let's keep going with the story here. So, an emotional affair can be just as quote-unquote real as a physical one. Interesting, interesting. According to Barash, women are more likely to d dive into the depths of an emotional affair. An emotional affair may not be physically consummated, but the intimacy can be breathtaking and can awaken a woman to what's missing in her life. Barash found that technology tools, including social media, uh, as well as the privacy of a phone, have made emotional affairs more common than they were in the past. She adds that the C uh, P word also caused a surge in emotional affairs. Wait, 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 wait. You mean to tell me that there is a correlation between women being on their phone and affairs of an emotional nature with but which by the way guys i would certainly extend um to physical affairs as well i don't know why they're not putting it in here but if you're going to sit here and tell me that increased exposure to random attractive dudes on social media doesn't result in more physical cheating as well i don't know you seem to be pretty out of your mind to me but uh you know guys this is why i say social media is so bad I would not be sad if YouTube were deleted, okay? Instagram were deleted, Twitter were deleted. Just delete everything. Let's let's go back to the Stone Ages before all this crap began, guys, because I don't know about you all, but personally, I think all of this technology is absolutely terrible for relationships. I think it's terrible for families. I think it's terrible for relationships. It's terrible for communities. And yet you, you can sit here and say that, and a lot of people will agree with me. And then I'll tell her, you know, you say to a girl, delete your Instagram, and she'll defend it 
for the rest of her life. So, uh, blah, blah, blah. This has made it more prevalent. Uh, another aspect I'm hearing from women is, wow, life feels really precious and precarious. I may as well reach out to the person I've always longed for, says Barash. Uh, even as open marriages have become less taboo, Barash found that it hasn't decreased the desire for a secret affair. Am I the only one who thinks that open, ma open and marriage should be mutually exclusive? Like, if you want to be in an open relationship, if you want to see other people, why are you in a marriage in the first place? You know, why would you engage in something that's sacred? Why would you go out here and go, you know what, I'm going to commit to one person and then not commit to one person? Dude, society is just absolutely backwards right now. Point number four, open marriage acceptance hasn't decreased the desire for an affair. Despite open marriages, excuse me, becoming less taboo than they were in the past, Barash says the majority of women she interviewed kept their marriages closed and their affairs secret. This was even more true of the Gen Z women Barash interviewed. The majority of them are still adhering to a conventional paradigm while breaking the expectation or rule of monogamy. I think that really feeds into a societal expectation or almost a cultural encouragement that we all marry and that love everlasting is the key to happiness. I don't know who on earth, like marriage is not about happiness. It's not about, you know, feeling that fiery passion until the end of days. A lot of people will tell you that marriage is hard work. You know, marriage isn't about going out here. And guys, this is just my perspective from someone who's unmarried, okay? So take it as you will. But I, I don't think that marriage is supposed to be a thing where you go into it looking for happiness. It's something, at least from what I understand, that's incredibly difficult, it's hard, and there are a lot of days where, you know, you might not like your partner. It's more of a duty than anything as opposed to, yeah, I'm just going to marry this guy because, you know... I always expect the butterflies to be there. The girls who expect the butterflies to be there all the time are the ones who end up divorcing their husbands and taking all of his money, taking his kids and all that kind of crap down the line. So I, I don't know, man. These girls who are marrying for like butterflies and happiness seems like an incredibly stupid idea to me. Well, let's continue here. In the US, there is an unrealistic expectation, uh, unrealistic tendency, excuse me, uh, to expect marriage to be a fairy tale and the key to happiness. Uh, yeah, see, I agree with that. Number five, the way Americans have affairs is unique. I don't know who would buy this book in France. Barash says affairs are deeply embedded in some cultures, but in America, our societal messaging and how we cling to it is the idea that wedding is the fairy tale and that marriage is the key to happiness. Because of this, leaving the marriage doesn't always seem like the right choice, at least at the beginning of an affair. The danger, Barash says, is that many affairs take on a life of their own. So let me get this straight. Women who go out here and have affairs, not only is it the man's fault for not fulfilling emotional needs, physical needs, whatever the case may be, um, but also that women are feeling justified in staying in said relationships after they have the affair. That's just absolutely amazing stuff to me, guys. So let's, let's do a rundown one more time of some of these points here, and then we'll wrap up today's episode. So number one, the reason why your wife or girlfriend is cheating on you is because she's looking for emotional discovery, you know? Or number two, an affair isn't necessarily a precursor to divorce. So even if she is cheating, guys, don't worry about it. You know, you can still uh, go out here and you can still go to, through therapy and work on mending. Fantastic. Yeah, that's definitely what men should do. Uh, emotional affairs can be just as real as a physical one. So they're looking for something, something real. Dude, what on earth is this? I'm going to get an aneurysm. Open marriage acceptance hasn't decreased the desire for an affair. You know what? I'll tell you with this, guys. If you're the type of guy who goes into a marriage and you open that marriage, you, you didn't have a marriage to begin with. Like, I see all of these girls pushing for open marriages, and then the dude just gives in, and he thinks that his girlfriend hasn't been cheating on him the whole time, or that it's an, incre an, an incredibly terrible idea. You know, a, a lot of these people who have open relationships, guys, I don't know why dudes do this to themselves at all, especially in the case of marriages. But gentlemen, we are going to be leaving today's episode there. As always, guys, remember to leave your thoughts and your comments. Gentlemen, what do you think about today's particular article? Do you think that cheating is ever justified? Personally, I think absolutely not. I think it's disgusting no matter what gender you are. And that's my stance on the issue. But guys, we're going to be leaving it there. Make sure that you take care of yourselves. And I'll be seeing you all in the next episode. Peace.
Yo guys, Past Taylor here. Just want to say thank you if you made it to the end of today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe to our other content creators over here at Fiend Gang, Hadan from Peace of Mind, and Detective Warg. Their channels will be linked in the video description. They've been putting out consistent content for you guys to enjoy, so make sure that you go and show them some love. Their channels will be linked below. Also, guys, if you are interested in supporting the channel, make sure that you come and join us for free over on Locals or Patreon. On Locals and Patreon, you guys get access to archived video content that is no longer available here on YouTube. And supporters also get access to exclusive videos where we cover different kinds of topics that you won't see me talk about here on YouTube because to be honest, uh, YouTube just really doesn't like it. There's video topics such as how broken families are created and how men can avoid it. Uh, bad traits that men can have the reason why women trait uh, chase married men etc so if you're interested in supporting make sure that you go and check that out and lastly guys if you're interested in getting a character made like mine be sure to hit up our artist at the gecko ninja he is linked in the video description as well uh, he's been doing art for fiend gang for quite some time so if his stuff interests you guys make sure that you hit him up for a commission as always he will be linked below the video but with all that being said guys make sure that you take care of your yourselves and i will see you all in the next one for real this time peace